Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and for today's Linux OS review, we're taking a look at Chakra Linux. Now, what is Chakra? I'm going to read right from their wiki page. Chakra is a pure KDE. It is independent and streamlining new Linux desktop distribution optimized for the award-winning KDE software compilation and QT framework. Chakra is built around the principles of freedom and features a half-rolling release model, which allow fast easy and stable updates to the latest software our community driven repository is designed to extend package choices and encourage community feedback so this is a kde distribution by default you will not find any uh, gtk software here so you're not going to find libreoffice you're not going to find gimp um, you know those those pieces of software are not installed by default you have KDE slash QT options and when you go into the official repositories once again it is all focused around KDE and QT however this community driven repository that they're talking about here you will find GTK applications here so if you really don't want to use the Caligra Office Suite which is what is provided by default and you want to use LibreOffice you can download and install LibreOffice uh, same with uh, I, I saw the GIMP in there and, and some other uh, GTK options that I use all the time but the the focus of Chakra is a good KDE distribution, a good KDE experience, and from what I have seen so far, they're really doing a good job at it. It's been very stable for me, and probably uh, I would rate it equally with uh, Chaos. If you uh, if you see my previous review on uh, on Chaos Linux, I would rate those two as probably the best KDE experience when it comes to Plasma Five. Um, at least of, of KDE distributions that I've been testing and trying out. Um, I have not experienced any bugginess, crashes, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, granted, I've only been working with this for about two days now, um, but I've been you know opening applications and, and adding software and you know moving panels around and all that kind of stuff and you know everything has worked flawlessly for me so I mean two thumbs up to uh, to the Chakra development team on that one so Chakra mentioned the half rolling release model what is that okay well basically what they do is the core of the operating system it follows a fairly traditional approach it gets updated you know maybe every six months or so uh, whereas the applications themselves they follow the rolling release model of you know as soon as a particular piece of software is deemed stable you get that update so you know long story short applications you know they just they just come rolling down the pike as as fast as as fast as they can be tested I guess you could say but that core um, you know uh, it's they take a lot more time to test it and uh, make sure it's really really stable before um, you know releasing that uh, uh, to the distribution and and I think it shows like I said very very stable here while we're talking about releases and all that and 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 being KDE and here's K info center uh, and I just pulled that up so that you can see we're running KDE Plasma version 5.5.4, QT version 5.5.1, the kernel version is 4.2.6. Uh, and then it talks a little bit about my hardware specs right down here. So I'm running this on uh, my desktop has an 8 core FX series AMD processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 15.6 of that are available and uh, just so you can see how much memory I'm using and whatnot um, you know of that 16 gigs I've got uh, oh, roughly 12 and a half gigs is free um, but kinda looking down at the breakdown on here you can see that 11 percent of my total memory I have free physical memory is 80 percent but of what I'm using here you know 11 percent of that is run, used by the application so not not at least for KDE 
it's not using a huge amount of memory. Um, KDE does tend to be a bit of a memory hog, although the uh, the recent updates to uh, to Plasma 5 they've been uh, getting things a little more efficient with memory use. Um, but it's still it's it's definitely not a lightweight distribution like something that would be based on LXDE or the Mate desktop that sort of thing. But uh, still, for being KDE, we're running fairly light on on the resources. So let's take a look at our desktop layout. We've got a, a fairly simple traditional layout, single panel across the bottom. Uh, but I do think that they've got all the all of the uh, bases covered. We've got a the standard KDE menu here, which you can you know click on it to open. It has a keyboard uh, uh, search. So let's you know just start typing, and boom, it starts pulling stuff up for you. I like that feature of it. However, when you come here to applications and as you're going through the various categories, I found that, that it's really easy to accidentally scroll over this computer button, which you know changes everything for you. So uh, this menu is kind of a hit or miss for me. Luckily, being that this is KDE, you know you can switch it to whatever menu you want, and there are several others available. So we've got that. We've got our workspace switcher. We've got all of our open windows. And then we've got clipboard manager input, and then all of our tray icons, you know, internet. I uh, got the little indicator for my simple screen recorder. Uh, some of them are hit. Some of my icons are hidden. You know, you can see everything that you got available here. Uh, then of course we got our time and date right here. And then of course the little hamburger in the corner, if you want to go and make some changes to your panel. As far as the desktop wallpaper, they've got several others available if you want to go and change it. Not a huge selection, but there's a there's a, a few there. And what they've got are really nice looking. But of course you can go and uh, use wallpapers that you have stored in your picture folder or whatever or uh, you know pull down new wallpapers whatever you want to do to change up the look of it I think I am going Ooh, that one looks nice yeah we'll stick with that for now as mentioned earlier all the software that is included by default is KDE slash QT based now I'm not going to go through the entire list of software because there's quite a bit that's installed by default and you know it would take a pretty long time just to go through the whole list rather than talk about any one particular piece of software so what mainly what I like to do is just kind of point out a few things that pieces of software that we normally don't see as default pieces of software but I think are really good choices uh, first one's going to be Krita and you know at basically anything that you use the GIMP for you can probably do it in Krita and I've been playing around with Krita for actually a couple of weeks now uh, installed it on my main desktop and and been working with it and you know really I'm, I'm really liking what what I see here essentially any as I said a, anything that you can do with GIMP you can do here but it seems like the interface makes more sense you don't have to go through quite as many steps to get to you know to, to to accomplish the same task as you would in the GIMP um, you know the the way the brushes are laid out it makes more sense um, the the way these panels are set up um, the way you access your tools just all of it seems to flow and work better uh, than it does in GIMP. Not that the GIMP is a bad tool, but, you know, I've been using that for years. It does a great job. It just seems like, even though there's a busy interface here, it just seems to be better organized and make more sense than it does in the GIMP. Uh, and plus, it really heavy development uh, on credit. The development is going really fast. Um, and I know a lot of people that uh, that have been switching from the GIMP to Krita, and after having play around with it here, I can understand why. So that's one thing that I want to take a look at. Another is Caligra. We have the Caligra Office Suite, which is a KDE-based Office Suite. 
and early versions of Caligra I was not all that impressed with but there's been a lot of improvements made one of the big things that I really like about uh, Caligra is the interface in that uh, let me go and and uh, we're gonna move this to the front so that we can see everything but anyway when you first open up you know here's Caligra words which is the word processor you know you've got some predefined uh, document templates that you can use or you can go and do a recent documents and go through those as well uh, you know professional letter we've got here uh, some colorful documents so let's go and pick that and click use that template give it a second it pops open let's maximize this and you know I really like the layout it's simple it's clean and I think it uses the available screen real estate much better than you know whether whether we're looking at um, uh, LibreOffice or Microsoft Windows I think it's a better use of the screen real estate because you know most of the time we're using say a, a letter sized document uh, which you know leaves you a lot of space on the left or and right hand side of, uh, of a widescreen monitor so you might as well go and put you know all of your settings all of your selections for characters and and font and page layout and all that kind of stuff. you might as well go and put that in sidebars and, and work that way so now Caligra is not uh, is not the perfect office suite it's still compared to LibreOffice uh, LibreOffice it is still lacking in features um, but once again this is a piece of software that is in fairly he heavy development and the improvements just keep coming down the pike and I think it's a good thing to have uh, you know multiple options out there multiple available uh, uh, pieces of software that do the same thing because you get a little bit of competition um, and and it kind of pushes development on all these projects and everybody ends up benefiting from that um, you know if there was just Microsoft Office um, why would there be any need for Microsoft to go into heavy development you know a tweak here a tweak there um, you know if uh, if there's no competition why would they go and change anything Usually in KDE distributions, we see the Dragon player as our multimedia player. In the case of this distribution, we have Boomi, which I wasn't really familiar with until that I saw it was formerly known as CM player, which I remember from uh, you know back in the day, I guess you could say. Uh, so hit a name change. Basically, this is a front end for uh, MPV or MVP, I think it is. Um, and it works really well plenty of options very easy to use let me go and pull this out of the way and uh, let me pop it up and this is just a home video that I shot in the backyard uh, the dogs playing but you know every format that I threw at this thing it you know it played everything ran great no issues easy to control and, and change the settings on it uh, you know just uh, everything just seemed to work so you know if you're looking for a good um, a good media player for for KDE environment this is a really good one to work with and now uh, you know I've been using this all through the review and really hadn't talked much about it uh, the default web browser is Quipzilla and you know, I reviewed Quipzilla previously, and running it in, I, I was I think I was running it in a GNOME environment, and was having lots of glitches and whatnot. I've been running it here on on Chakra without any issues or anything like that. So, um, you know, it it may have been, uh, you know, all the previous problems that I had with Quipzilla came down to that I needed to be running it in a KDE environment. Um, not sure if that's what it is, but like I say, it's, it's been relatively glitch-free. Well, not even relatively. They have had no issues 
uh, at all since I've been running it here. Um, lots of options. You come down to preferences, and uh, you can see you've got lots of settings. So if you want to change things around, play around with the tabs, how you do the browsing, your your look and whatnot. So if you want to change the fonts, that sort of thing. Um, fair number of extensions. They've got a few installed by default. More are available. So really overall it's been a really good web browser package management is handled by Occupy those of you that have played around with Manjaro probably recognize it from that distribution or at least on the KDE uh, versions of, the, of that distribution uh, excellent tool you've got a keyword search so you can search through the packages um, you know or you can kind of scroll through there that kind of thing um, down at the bottom you get all kinds of information on you know there's a general description files transactions all that kind of stuff so you know you can search around here for oh I don't know let's let's just look at some KDE stuff you know and just put in KDE and then it starts popping up with you know everything that's got KDE and and search now I talked about the community repositories and little alien looking button right here if you go and click that you can search for those commute through the community repository so so let's do LibreOffice click enter and boom it starts pulling up LibreOffice package so you can go and install some of that uh, I believe I found the GIMP in here as well yep as well as you know a lot of the GIMP plugins and that sort of thing um, I wonder if Chrome is in here uh, yeah so if you want to install Google Chrome you can do that so and there's a few things that I install here like uh, I'm using simple screen recorder for my screen recording I found that in the community repositories it's not a GTK app it's actually a, is it is a KDE app I'm not exactly sure why it hasn't uh, why it wasn't in the main repos to begin with but for whatever reason it wasn't and, but it was right there in the community repos and uh, installed it through the through this uh, through Occupy everything went down without a hitch very very nice uh, package management tool Overall, Chakra has been a real good KDE experience, real good Linux experience in general. I mean, like I said, everything has just worked right out of the box, which has been, you know, with, with this being KDE uh, Plasma 5, I have had trouble, um, you know, with a lot of the KDE distributions with glitches and, you know, things freezing up and crashing, you know, you move a panel and the whole desktop crashes, you know, stuff like that. I have not had that here with Chakra. So, um, you know, definitely if you want a good Plasma 5 experience, this is definitely worth taking a look at. And on that note, I think that just about finishes this video up definitely give this distribution a try uh, if you do give it a try be sure to leave a comment down below let me know what you think of it uh, and let everybody else know what you think of it you know spread the word and whatnot um, so anyway comments questions all that kind of stuff leave it down below I try to get to them as soon as I can and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and I hope to see you all on my next video thanks a lot